Hey everyone, welcome to M2F Story. Today I am going to share with you Please Mom Feminize Me Part 1, written by Janet Stickney. So if you are new to the channel, then please consider subscribing. And check out my Patreon, patreon.com slash M2F Story. Inconsistent, inaccurate, and inept. That's how I feel about my dressing. I can never seem to do it the same way twice. I usually wear the wrong things or do my makeup badly, and of course trying to do anything but a ponytail is out of the question. So far, every time I tried to do my best, I felt like a clown. I was disheartened and disillusioned because I wanted to be able to dress, look, and live as a girl. Of course, the odds were against me ever succeeding. I'm 17, not too tall, and a bit but pudgy. I have reddish brown hair with blue eyes. My name is Andy Grant. I have an older sister, but she's away at school, leaving just my parents and I. Because of my inability to have anything I would call success when I tried dressing up, I fell into a depression. The vision in my mind simply could not be realized, and the more I tried, the worse it got. I became moody and sloppy, which drove my parents nuts, but I didn't know how to get myself out of the never-ending cycle of desire versus ugly reality. As school drew to a close, my grade point average started to collapse, which only drove me further into my depression. Mom tried to find out why, but how could I tell her? My inner desire to be more feminine in every way ran counter to everything she knew about males and our role in society. She was not unaware of the phenomenon, of course, but it was those people over there who do that. How could I tell her that over there was alive and well in her own house? And what about my dad? He would freak out. Three weeks before the end of the year, everything came to a head, erupting in a burst of tears and angry, ugly words. Andrew, I want you to tell me why your grades have fallen so much. You've been an absolute terror since the first of the year. Moody, sloppy, curt, even nasty at times. Tell me what's going on. Maybe we can help. I was sitting at my computer desk as mom looked at me. Her normally beautiful face screwed into one of bewilderment and anger. You wouldn't understand. This cannot go on, young man. You tell me what's bothering you, and I mean right now. Her red-tipped finger was pointed at me. Her other hand clenched in an unfamiliar fist. Her beautiful blue's eyes, now a stormy gray, had narrowed and her mouth became a mere slit, red in her anger, tight with frustration. I had seen her this way only once before when Beth got pregnant in high school. No. Yes! She grabbed my arm and spun me around, coming face to face with me, our noses just inches apart, her eyes glaring and stern. I'm not giving you a choice, Andrew. I'm telling you. Her anger and my frustration clashed and grew hot, yet I remained silent. As her hand grew tighter on my arm, I also grew angry. My secret was mine and mine alone, and by her insisting that I tell her, she provoked my long-held anger at my failures. Her slap wasn't all that hard, but it sent the message that she was serious. In a fit of anger and stupidity, I blurted it out. Okay, you want to know? Well, I want to be a girl. Those few words shocked her so much that she flopped down on the bed, her eyes widening as she stared at me. Silence reigned as we glared at each other, both of us lost in the implications of what I had said. My self-imposed silence was broken, shattering my self-esteem even as I held my head up in prideful anger. Mom sat there silent as she stared at me, her face still showing the shock of what I had said. For what seemed like hours, all we did was look at each other until she suddenly stood up. We'll talk about this after I think about it some more, Andrew. But in the meantime, I want this crabby attitude of yours to stop. Understand? I nodded my head yes, and she went to the door, opened it, started to walk out, then stopped and turned to face me. I'll bet you would be quite pretty all fixed up, right, Andrew? Then she left. On that note, I sank deeper into the chair. My foolish, angry outburst had let her in on my secret, leaving me open to ridicule and possibly worse from my father. The tears started to swell in my eyes, dripping down my cheeks until at last the floodgates opened and I started sobbing. I was unable to face the truth, scared that my desire, so well hidden for so long, was now in the open. I could only guess what would happen next. I lay on my bed for a long time, trying to reconcile myself to a sure and certain punishment of some kind. Dad was a man that, while unbending in so many ways, was not an intolerant man about minorities. But this was in his own house, his own son this time. I knew what his view of what I wanted would be.
He would never understand me and probably not even try. My best hope was that he would stay silent about my revelation, a kind of tacit approval. Just before he came home, Mom came to my room and sat on the bed next to me. It's been hard to hide a secret like this, hasn't it? I nodded my head as I felt her hand on my back, gently rubbing back and forth. I'll bet that you never get it right. Would you like to try again? I'll help you. I stayed silent while my mind tried to absorb and make sense of what she had said. Well, do you? My mind screamed yes while I stayed silent. I do have some experience, you know. Of course she did. I started to giggle, a nervous giggle that turned into another round of sobbing. Embarrassed at my lack of control, I said nothing. I'll take that as a yes. We'll see what we can do to make you into a girl. Her weight left the bed. Then her footsteps sounded as she walked out, closing the door behind herself. Nothing was said at dinner that night. All seemed normal, and afterwards I went to my room. I tried to sleep, but visions of my mother laughing at me kept haunting my dreams. By the morning, I was still tired after a restless night, yet also excited. Mom came in and told me that Saturday would be the day. The bigger question was how would this all end? I could only hope for the best. Mom, my name is Audrey Grant. I'm Andy's mother. His revelation yesterday shocked me right to the core, making me lay awake that night as I went over every single day of his life, trying to figure out what I did wrong. I grew up in the 70s, so I knew about people that wore the clothes of the other gender, of course, and I had even met a few. But this was my son. Not once, not even at Halloween, did he ever express any desire to dress as a girl, so why now? Had he managed to keep his secret even back then? I'm 37, not so old that I don't understand gays and so on. I went to school with a boy that said he was gay. Benny seemed okay, and I accepted him. So why do I feel so ashamed that Andy told me he wants to be a girl? I mean, it's only clothing, right? He was right about his father, though. Bill won't have a clue and won't try to get one either. As a plumber, he works with his hands in a good profession. But he grew up poor and never had the chance to meet anyone that wasn't just like him. He had hoped that Andy would follow him into the trade. But it has been obvious for quite a while that Andy had no inclination that way. He wants to be a writer. I slept badly that night as I wondered how I could get Andy to open up to me. Maybe let me help him, but the specter of his father in a rage loomed when my mind drifted to a vision of Andy all dressed up. Andy is like his sister Beth in many ways, same eye color, same pudgy body. About the same height, Andy even has hair that went down his back, just like Beth. I had to find a way to tell Bill and make him understand what had to be done. Andy is on the verge of some kind of breakdown, and if dressing as a girl even once relieves the stress on him, then I have to find a way to help Andy and get his father's blessing. Dad sees her. I'm Bill, Andy's dad. When Audrey told me what Andy wanted to do, I'll admit that my first reaction was to beat my son, until he couldn't stand up, before I calmed down, that is. Audrey has a way of making me pay attention to her without raising her voice. When she told me that she had known for almost a week, I was irate because she and I never keep secrets from each other. Her voice, that same soft contralto of hers, quavered only once as she told me what she wanted to do. She said that Andy needed to try it at least once just to see himself as a girl. And if it went well, maybe a bit more, like a trip outside of the house. That scared me because of the neighbors. They might see my son all dressed up as a girl. I could only imagine what he would look like. A clown in a dress. Audrey said this is important to him. Very important. She also pointed out that I accepted the situation when Beth was pregnant, and this is no different. I was angry at Beth, of course, a baby at her age. But as she grew larger, I became protective of her, like a grandfather. When she gave the baby away, I was saddened, I guess. I had gotten used to the idea that she was going to be a mother. Now, Andy. According to Audrey, if I said no, he'll just graduate, move away, and do it on his own. This way, at least, we'll have some control. I hated the idea of my son dressing as a girl, but letting him do this on his own and possibly get into trouble was worse. I gave in, but with serious concerns. Audrey told me what she wanted me to do and when. Then she told me not to be there. It sounded like I was hiding from my own son. On Saturday morning, you and I are going to make you over into the girl of your dreams, Andrew. Don't make any plans for this weekend, okay? So sure, Mom. Andy. 
I had to wait three very long days for Saturday to arrive. Tense does not describe how I felt when the fateful day arrived. As soon as dad went to work, mom took me to her room, insisting that this was a do it right or not at all session, and had me stripped to my briefs. After she rubbed in a cream, I had to wait a bit. Then in the shower, all of my sparse body hair washed down the drain. With my hair squeaky clean, a fresh shave, and a hairless body, I wrapped a towel around myself and rejoined mom. In a swirl of compressed time, I was wearing panties with my hair in rollers. She took the time to carefully get me dressed, and the results were worth the effort. My nervousness left me as soon as she began to put in the rollers, and from then on, I was a more than willing subject, but said nothing about how I felt. This is foundation. I'm going to show you how to do it on myself, then you do yourself. Under her watchful eye, I covered my whole face evenly. I had never used the powder, but as I brushed away the excess, I could see how it made my skin look softer and smoother. The eyeshadow was a lot harder. I used a thin line of soft green, then a plum color over that. Using the liquid eyeliner was the worst. It took me two tries to get it even close. In the end, I rested my elbow on the table and managed to draw the thin black line on each eye with a single stroke. Under my eyes, I used a black pencil. When I looked in the mirror, I was simply shocked. I had never managed to do this. Now we'll get some clothes on you, Andy. While I watched her, Mom opened a bag and put some clothes on the bed. Beth wore this when she was in high school. I guess it's your turn. I took it in my hand, felt the rods built into it, and looked at Mom. It's called a waist nipper, Andrew. Wrap it around yourself and fasten the hooks in the front, the tag to the top. As soon as I had it hooked and zipped up, my waist was at least a few inches smaller while my upper chest seemed to swell up. The bra was one of Beth's, a 34A. It was peach in color with lace-trimmed cups that didn't look like much, but Mom said it would be fine. As soon as I had it on, I saw why. The cups had some pads in them that pushed up my flabby chest, creating what looked like breasts. Push these in under yourself, Andrew. The small oval-shaped pads lifted my flesh while filling out the cups of the bra, making it look like I had boobs. I sat on the bed and pulled on the pantyhose, the nylon slicking across my now hairless skin making me shiver, and sent the wrong message to my manhood. Embarrassed, I turned away from mom and hid things. She said nothing about it, but smiled at me. I think these will fit Andrew, mom said as she handed me the skirt. It was short, green, and white checked, pleated all of the way around. I stepped into it and fastened the button and zipped it up. It fell about mid-thigh on me. The blouse was white with short sleeves and a round collar. I quickly put it on and tucked it into the skirt, then pulled the soft tan sweater over my head, being careful of the rollers. The shoes were black with short heels and new. I bought them for you the other day. I hope they fit. They did. It was my first time in heels, yet I had no trouble walking or standing in them at all. Now we do your hair and finish your makeup. I sat as mom began to take the rollers out. My hair is quite long, so mom did it like Beth wears her hair. She cut my bangs, brushing out the top in a curly mass, then brushed it out and let it hang down my back, and used barrettes to hold up and back some of the hair she had brushed out. When she was done, she handed me a blusher, then a soft red lipstick. Gold clip on earrings, a gold bracelet and necklace. I think you can see the whole girl now, Andrew. Stand over here. Allowed at last to look in the full mirror, I was shocked. From the top of my head down to my pointy heels, there was no sign that I was male. Two hours it had taken. From the hair removal to makeup and hair then, the clothes. Peach panties and bra, the pantyhose that made my legs look so long and sexy. The short skirt. Earrings in shiny gold swung from my earlobes, a pendant between my breasts, pushing down, accenting the swelling twin mounds of my breasts. In all of the times that I have been secretly dressing up, at last I had the chance to go all of the way, not just hair, makeup, or the occasional effort to slip on a dress. Everything I have on is Beth's, but all of the clothes fit me reasonably well. I was right, you do make a pretty girl, Andrew. It was all I could do to tear myself away from the mirror and look at her. I'm 5'7", with soft reddish hair that sweeps well past my shoulders. The curls held back on the sides with barrettes, bangs that fall to my eyebrows. My face is small, oval in shape, with eyes now almond-shaped, accented by the black eyeliner. I let my hands run down my body, starting at my breasts.
They swelled out to a full A cup, small but nice, then down a tapering bodice to the flaring skirt. Whenever I spin around, the skirt flares out revealing long, nylon-clad legs. All at once, I felt the relief I always wanted. The girl in the mirror was the girl I always wanted to be. She was, to me anyway, beautiful beyond words. Not a clown in any sense, this girl was the proverbial girl next door, and I was the girl. I was unable to stop looking in the mirror, my grin plastered on my face like a child with a new toy, my excitement clear. All at once, I wanted to leave the house, go shopping for another outfit, walk the mall and sit and have a soft drink while letting everyone see and admire me. But I lacked the courage. I was more than content to be dressed, stand at the mirror, and simply look at her. Abby, it's the name I picked for her, Abigail Elizabeth Grant. Lost in the vision I was seeing, I realized that mom was talking to me. How about some lunch? She took my hand and we walked down the stairs and into the kitchen, made a sandwich and poured some iced tea. Sitting at the table, I slowly ate my lunch slowly, savoring the feeling of such openness, enjoying each minute. We washed up the dishes, and I went in the small bath, retracing my lips with fire engine red lipstick two coats. I was in absolute heaven as I looked at my reflection. Lost in my euphoria at the sight of myself in the mirror, I did not hear the door slowly open. As I stood there admiring the way I looked, Mom asked me if I had selected a name for the girl standing there. More than slightly nervous at admitting that I had gone so far as to pick out a name for myself, I hesitated for the barest moment. Tell me, Andrew. Ah, uh, Abigail Elizabeth. That's a very pretty name, Abigail Elizabeth. I like that, she said, smiling. I know that you said you had never been out of the house, so why not now? Come with me. I have a few errands to run anyway, and you can see what it's like. My euphoria evaporated instantly with the thought of leaving the house, but Mom merely looked at me, waiting for an answer. Are you afraid to talk even to me? No. I croaked, my long-practiced, softly feminine voice deserting me, just when I needed it the most. Since you can't seem to find a way to say anything, I'll take that as a yes. My eyes still wide at the thought of leaving the house, she asked. Do you have a purse? Yes, came the squeaky answer. Go get it and put your wallet and lipstick in it, then come back here, I'll be waiting. I tried, but I was stuck. I simply could not make myself move. Well? I'm scared. Don't be afraid, dear. Go get your purse and I'll wait here. It was a command, and like a little child, I did what she told me to do, just like I always did. The moment I returned, she took my arm. I think it's time the world got a chance to see just how pretty you are, don't you? No matter how hard I tried, I was unable to say no. I was fighting my impulse to run and hide against my desire to experience being a female, at least once, outside of the house. Let me straighten my hair a bit and we'll go. In moments, she was done then, with no struggle, I let her walk me to the car. As mom drove along, she said nothing more until she drove into the lot and parked the car. I won't force you to go in, Abby, but we both know that this is exactly what you want to do, but are afraid. Am I right? I had sweat running down my back, my forehead was damp, and my hands were shaking even as I said yes. I'll be with you the whole time. And I think that unless you do this now, you will always regret it, and you will never find the nerve to be the girl you want to be, or do anything else even remotely daring. She took my chin in her hand and looked at me. That's it for today. Hope you have enjoyed it. If you do, then be sure to subscribe for the next part of this story. And show your support on Patreon.